Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in the last week, particularly Michael J. Shea, beloved husband, father, grandfather, uncle, and army veteran of the Korean War, Thomas J. Gilbride, loving husband, father of former Scranton school director, Tom Gilbride, grandfather, brother, uncle, and Air Force veteran, our friend Fred Rosar, devoted father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and brother, and their dear families and many friends they leave behind, also, please remember in your prayers Councilman Loscom, who is suffering from pneumonia. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscom? Mr. Joyce? Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A, Zoning Hearing Board Agenda for meeting held on Wednesday, January 9th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Received from Robert Rossi and Company a timetable to adhere to in order to issue the December 31st, 2012 audited financial statements by May 31st, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Are there any clerk's notes, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have <laughs> announcements at the, or council member? <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll just announce the one item that we all had on the top of our mail today. Um, as everyone saw, there was an article in the paper regarding trees being planted in the neighborhoods. And um, Mr. Santoli did call council's office today um, to respond that homeowners that do not wish to have trees planted on their property, um, volunteers will approach them and the homeowners have to give their approval first. And he also said the volunteers are given orders not to plant trees where they're not wanted. So some people did have some concerns about that. And I just wanted to, uh, to announce that. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I thank Mr. Santoli for his prompt uh, response to my letter. Um, Councilman Loscom is unable to attend tonight's meeting due to illness. And we thank Mr. Tom Welby for taking over the cameras tonight for ECTV so that this meeting can be broadcast live. On Monday, January 21st, our nation will celebrate Martin Luther King Day, Jr., or Martin Luther King Jr. Day in honor of a civil rights leader of great wisdom, courage, and compassion. Numerous local events will commemorate the life and lessons of Dr. King. But it is equally important that we practice his teachings of equality, humanity, dignity, respect, and compassion in our daily lives. And that's it. Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker tonight is Ron Elman. Yeah. Thank you, Council. I I saw this paper for the the house foreclosures the other day, and Arthur Alt, A L T. Th this poor guy's losing 
a piece of property for $6,400 in school taxes. At the end of the list was uh, Joseph, I guess it's Zauka, Zauka, Z R O W K A. He's losing his house on Philo Street. In between that A and Z, there's over 3,000 people, families have lost property around here the last few years that's been in the paper. That I imagine most of them have left town. The 3,000 people that have lost the most cherished thing that, they've, that, that, that you can own is your home. You know, we've had 20 years of Pell and not one positive suggestion, just year after year, the, the useless, contemptible stupidity, just raise taxes and borrow. That's all they suggest. It, 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 when, when are you going to stop it and, and do something for the city? I, I, I had a suggestion to have Miss Nancy write all the bankers and ask them to reply with what they think could be done. You might get a good suggestion out, out, out of one of the banks. This, you just can't keep going to these people and raising taxes. Where are we going to be in 10 or 20 years from now? Your children will be in the same place we are right now. The city will still owe tens of millions of dollars. The universities will still be giving a, a, a minute amount of what they've taken off the tax rolls and, and brag about it. Lackawanna College uh, they're not going to give you nothing. They told you, you guys to go to hell one time when you ask them for money. They're spending their budget on advertising and TV ads so they can get more students and steal more property off the tax rolls and grow their 40%. It's just, you, you know, when someone wants to do something positive, there's no help. There was a fellow who wanted to buy a house on the 1700 block of Kapaus, a big six unit house. <coughs> he said everybody was against him. He got turned down trying to buy a house to put on the tax rolls. Then there was that, the company that wanted to take the building on the 700 block for a woman's center. It would have been put on the tax roll. I don't know why. Council should have stood behind him instead J.C. Nichols, he has a lawyer go fight it for some reason. It, it just, it's just like, a, like everybody keeps attacking the few taxpayers that are left. It, 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 uh, the other day about the recovery plan, the newspapers said there's a shortage because of economic condition in the licensing. The reason there's shortage there is because these developers deliberately cheat on what they put down. Jefferson says he, he spent $32 million or something on the Cornell building, and he paid $33,000 building permits. They should have been two or three times that. I mean, I know everything isn't like labor and, and, and so on, but. These people are cheating the city out of millions of dollars and not one thing is done about it. Nothing. It's just, it's just like uh, the, the developers get everything and somebody wants to put up a fence, got to pay more in percentage for a 2,000 foot fence than somebody building a building. It, it's, it's just backwards. It's like I've been saying for three weeks you people find it easier to, to attack the taxpayer than fight for them. You know, I got 30 something empty apartments in, in one block this way and one block that way around my house. My house looks like it's just the neighborhood is going down so fast that zone has attracted all kinds of, of real bad people from other parts of the city, they get chased out and they're over in my neighborhood. I've, we've caught two people in my garage. 
it's the same it's the same thing everywhere and, and there's just no help it's not a police matter it's just that there's just no help for the taxpayers here you need to do something about Pell and try to get the plan B if you ask me thank you mr. thank Honor. you Joseph Burke good evening good evening I promise to be brief I'm going to stay right here in front of the microphone. I wanted to thank the council for their continued efforts to enforce the traffic ordin ordinance banning truck traffic on Lake Scranton Road. I'd also like to present some more indisputable facts to those council members that still support the notion that the ordinance should be enforced, but the largest, most disruptive and dangerous trucks going to and from DeNaples junkyard should be awarded an exemption to that ordinance. I'm still scratching my head trying to figure out when public safety is a matter of compromise. I can't understand what criteria would apply when public safety would be compromised. But this information I'm about to give is readily available on the county tax assessor's website. There are 16 homes on Lake Scranton Road. The lowest tax assessment is $17,500 and the highest tax assessment is $35,000. Doing the math, the average tax assessment for one of those 16 homes is $23,000. I personally paid $4,100 in property taxes last year. What I got for it was a road that wasn't paved in 20 years. A road I won't even drive on anymore. I leave my house, take a left, and go down Elmhurst Boulevard because that's in better shape than Lake Scranton Road. Another thing I got for my $4,100 was a mayor who turned his back on the property owners and taxpayers on Lake Scranton Road. Until 2010, my wife and I gladly paid the relatively high property taxes, having enjoyed the safety, peace, and tranquility that our neighborhood once afforded. We appealed our property taxes last year, arguing that the market value of our property was being negatively affected by the truck traffic going to and from DeNaples junkyard and their newly established dumping grounds. We were successful in having our tax assessment slightly lowered, but we intend to appeal it again this year because it has been declared the access road to the Naples junkyard. And the city will not defend the taxpayers and residents of Lake Scranton Road. The mayor and, the, and his solicitor have virtually ceded our neighborhood to the Denables with no attempt to present any type of defense to Attorney Bellardi's specious arguments. Presently, because of their inaction, there is no restriction on what can be transported over our once peaceful and isolated road. I would expect other property owners on Lake Scranton Road will follow suit and appeal their property taxes, resulting in lost revenue for the city. If my wife and I intended to purchase a home in Scranton where the diesel tractors roared, we probably would have selected a home in an area where heavy-duty traffic was the norm. And we would have expected our property taxes to be assessed that reflected that location. However, we chose Lake Scranton Road because of the tranquility, the nature of the neighborhood, and gladly paid the high property taxes never expecting our neighborhood would be transformed into an access road to a junkyard and a dumping ground in Dunmore. Under the current conditions, the market value of our home has, de has been decimated, and so has the market value of our neighbors' homes. Now, in September of 2012, Mayor Doherty called me at my house, and he told me he intended to remedy the truck traffic problem on Lake Scranton Road as soon as possible. He admitted his administration dropped the ball in 2010 when the city engineer failed to conduct the traffic study of Lake Scranton Road that was a prerequisite to banning the truck traffic. My opinion of any man is he's only as good as his word. And the mayor's word is not good. The council members who propose granting exemptions to the Denaples should remember that talk is always cheap, words without conviction, and actions are merely hollow <coughs> promises. Once again, I thank the council for their efforts. I'd also request that the council request the mayor 
request Mr. De Naples if we could have permission to put some soft patch in the larger holes on Lake Scranton Road, if it wouldn't interfere with his commerce. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Burke, um, as you may know, um, the uh, testing of the dirt is underway. Uh, I had requested that at a previous meeting. I had also requested um, that a, a study be done by the city engineer. And today I received a response that I'd like to read to you now regarding that study. Uh, and this is from Paul Kelly, Esquire City Solicitor. I have been asked to opine as to whether SECO Associates in its capacity as city engineer and its past and current relationship with DeNaples Auto Parts constitutes a conflict of interest regarding the threatened litigation. It is my considered opinion that SECO does have a conflict and council should forward any future requests to the law department and alternate engineer Civil Crossroads Consulting Engineers, LLC. And so, Mrs. Craik, I would like the request for the traffic study to be forwarded to Civil Crossroads Consulting Engineers. And, you know, you can advise Solicitor Kelly that council will be pursuing that. And in addition, at Mr. Burke's request, if we can send a letter to the mayor uh, requesting that to Naples would fill the, the holes in Lake Scranton Road with soft patch. Or if he would grant the mayor permission to have our Department of Works do it. Uh, it seems that nothing can be done without Mr. De Naples' permission. So whichever way it could be done, uh, I would appreciate yes. somebody filling the holes. We'll pursue that for you. Thank you very much. And thank and you, I, Mr. Once Burke. again, I appreciate everything that you're doing. You're very welcome. As it's well known, the mayor and the solicitor just don't have the fight in them. Thank you. Thank you. Bob Bolas. Good evening, Council. Bob Wallace. Good evening. Back for another fun evening. Uh, on uh, 6A, uh, Boyd is here, so he knows I won't talk behind his back. I totally disagree with any additional money being paid outside the contracts. I mean, this is basic uh, contract law that we're looking at. It's nothing to the extent that Boyd had to do in the past. And uh, I just disagree with any additional money being paid out. And if it is, I'd like to see a fee agreement and everything else that's going to be paid uh, to him. Paul Kelly, as I've said more than once, and I thank Council. Uh, Nancy called me today uh, to try and give me a response to my request, and I appreciate that. However, as usual, and for the last year, Paul Kelly has again failed to respond. So what I did. Uh, in the past, we've already put the city of Scranton, which is required on notice by a letter of our intent to sue. Well, now we're going to file the action, and uh, Paul Kelly will now become accountable because there's $50,000 out there that this city should be getting. And if some underhanded deal or something went on, we're going to get to the bottom of it. We could ask the University of Scranton to do an internship that could assist Council, Boyd, or Paul Kelly as it relates to 6A. Get something back. They need to come in. These guys are going for masters, MBAs, and a lot of stuff, so they have the experience to do what we need to do. This isn't an overly complicated. Dot and I are crossing a T and reading the contract. It's basic contract law. And that's my issue of what I believe is, I don't think there's any more, person in this room more qualified than Boyd. 
You know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him, but Boyd knows I speak my piece. Uh, moving a little further with this. Uh, I guess talking about uh, this street that the gentleman has gone through. I grew up on Elmhurst Boulevard and used to use that road on a daily basis to get to Dunmore. And it was a road that was open for everybody to drive their cars through, go down through to the Naples junkyard, whatever you wanted to call it. I really wonder to this day, because one day it just wound up with uh, a barrier across it. I'd really like to see a full title search of that property to see when and if that road was ever vacated or turned over to the Naples. It could be still considered a paper street that the city by ordinance could reopen. It could still be a street for access that the city could take by eminent domain for people to be allowed to drive on that road. If people go back, when this was the landfill, or the, not the landfill, I'm sorry, but the junkyard you now see again along 81, the largest junkyard in the world along, uh, or in the country, I mean, we were known for it. Not for what the prosperity in the city was and the people and the growth in the area, but because we were happy to be a junkyard. We grew cars there. When the Naples took over on Mill Street, the old ironworks and everything else that was there. The agreement, and I sat in on it, was that for them to give him the variance for the Mill Street property, that it was his warehouse and car parts yard, he had to vacate everything that was on that mountain. That was the stipulation. It was in black and white. There are people today that were on that council that made that decision for him to do it. And he abided by it. People remember that whole mount was cleaned right off. And then gradually it just started putting stuff back. Tractor trailers were going across the bridge. There's no reason, you don't have to gross as much weight on that bridge going under the interstate. You can run less weight, take it over to his other yard and transfer the loads to make heavier loads going out of there if that's what he needs to do. They used it for years and years and years. I think the encroachment on the people on East Mountain, Lake Scranton Road, has to come to a halt. These people built their homes there. This is an abuse of the privacy of the people that live on there. There's trucks coming down Music Street on a daily basis that are running in and out of the landfill, hauling the Marcella Shale cuttings. Whether they're empty or they're loaded, they're going up and down there for repairs. As we all know, they have a facility up past Lake Scranton. But to have tractor trailers and trucks going up and down that road on a daily basis, I would recommend to the city, to council tonight, we have a DOT unit here in the city of Scranton. Start weighing them as they come up that road, which we have every legal right to do. So enforce a weight limit. Put a weight limit on the road, which we could do. But the people do not deserve to be bullied in this community. We've taken enough. We have to smell the stench of the garbage and so on and so forth. And I'm not stopping anybody from making money or what you're doing. But these people, and I've lived there, do not have to have their rights taken away because of politics and the threat of a lawsuit. When this city is bent over backwards for the Denapel landfill, and yet to this day has failed to implement a leachate fee on there that could generate millions and millions of dollars into this community. Thank, Thank you. you. And our next Mrs. speaker, Evans, yes. Could I, uh, before Mr. Burke leaves, uh, Mr. Burke, I, I just had a, Mr. Boyles a, a question uh, if you would, wouldn't mind. The, the, a, the access road that we're talking about, is that in the city of Scranton or is that Dunmore? 
Do you know? I, I can answer. I know it's right. Uh, the border is somewhere there, and I'm not sure whether that road is Dunmore or Scranton. Back when you came down, when you make the right hand turn, that becomes more of the Elmhurst Boulevard. Yes. Crosses into Dunmore. Part of that road where it goes over, from what I understand, you know, 30, 40 years ago, was still part of the city of Scranton. And then it changes as it gets further down with the lines. That's why I think the survey okay, I, should it, be done. Maybe. I, I, I just wasn't sure, and I, I just, uh, because All I, I can say with certainty is I moved there in 2003, and the road was closed until 2010. Right. I, I, I was just, I, I thought maybe you had an answer, you know, that somebody knew whether that was Dunmore or no, Scranton. Had, Thank had you. The mayor, had the mayor had the engineer do the survey, the traffic study in 2010, we'd all had the answers to okay. all those Thank questions. You. Thank well, you. It, it, it appears, at least from um, Mr. DeNaples' point of view, that it is in Scranton, or he wouldn't be threatening litigation against the city well, of Scranton. It, it, it's not, not Lake Scranton Road. The, the, the access road is on the other side of Elmhurst Boulevard. And, and somewhere along there, Dunmore, the border between Scranton and Dunmore exists. So. It, it, I guess I, I'm not sure. We're up there. I'm up there all the time, and I, I'm just not sure whether that's Scranton or Dunmore. So. Well, maybe that's something else that can be determined by the engineer. Right, and, and that'd be fine. I, I just you, thought maybe that they would know. If you would talk to Mrs. Craig and add that in we'll to do. the request, please. Our next speaker is Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good evening. Just like to begin tonight uh, by briefly discussing the uh, 2011 audit that we did finally receive. Uh, I did get a copy of it. Haven't had a chance to fully look it over. I intend on doing that. Um, I, however, I am. I do have to say I am a little disappointed in the amount of time that it did take to receive it, as this has been an issue that we've dealt with uh, on many occasions. My only hope is that moving forward, um, we receive audits in a more timely fashion, so that we can use these as vital tools when we put budgets together and other financial documents to give us an understanding of where we are financially. Um, and it leads me into to once again bringing up the forensic audit and I know we've discussed that here on many occasions and, and we've discussed the cost of, of doing that and how it is uh, quite costly and, and certainly with the city's financial situation um, it would seem uh, unrealistic at this time that we would have the ability to uh, put forth a forensic audit. But I truly believe that that's the only way we will get a firm understanding of where we sit financially, uh, where we account for everything, um, going back to the last 12 years of this administration, uh, certainly knowing the headaches and the, the mismanagement that they've caused. Um, we need that to, to really understand where we are um, so that we can answer the many questions that we have. Uh, moving on to the agenda tonight, 6A, uh, I did address this last week. Um, I guess I have a, a, a different opinion from some of the speakers tonight. Um, I see it a lot differently. I don't see this as uh, double dipping by Attorney Hughes or Attorney Kelly or anyone else involved. You know, when we take a look, and, and as I've said before, you know, I sound like a broken record and, and repetitive with this, but when we take a look at all the issues that these individuals have dealt with, uh, particularly Attorney Hughes, uh, who's gone above and beyond, and I can't stress that enough, with the recovery plan, uh, the parking authority, and the budget, and many other things that he's done behind the scenes that we don't even know about. He's certainly taken on uh, tasks that many council solicitors in the past wouldn't go near. And it's not to get an extra paycheck. It's not to get the notoriety. It's to help the city, but most importantly, to help the taxpayers, who he knows are struggling, and he knows the city's struggling, and that we have difficult decisions to make. So we know that this is, this is about compensation to individuals that have gone, gone above and beyond and dealing with any future financial uh, negotiations that we may have to undertake moving forward. Uh, so again, I, I do see it a little differently. I don't see it as double dipping, um, and that's my opinion on that. I, I don't want to continue to harp on that issue. Uh, and finally tonight, uh, in regards to the Lake Grant Road issue, uh, we heard from uh, Mr. Burke tonight. And I, I have mentioned it in the past. I, I do feel it's unfortunate that these residents have had to deal with this ongoing frustration. It's my only hope that we can come to a resolution once and for all, avoid litigation, avoid all the costly fees and everything that are involved with it, so that we can satisfy these residents. They shouldn't have to live 
uh, with this uh, inconvenience every day. Um, you know, certainly I do believe that the city uh, should fill these holes that have been caused by, un I understand the vehicles that uh, do commute back and forth on this road. Uh, it's just not fair to them. They pay taxes and they certainly should not have to uh, be inconvenienced by noise and, and heavy vehicles that travel uh, each and every day causing a disturbance for them. And uh, with that, uh, that's, that's pretty much it tonight. Uh, pretty brief. And uh, we'll be back next week. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Craig, before I forget, uh, I'm, it triggered my memory because of the discussion of Lake Scranton Road. If you could also contact um, Acting Chief Graziano tomorrow and ask him uh, if we may please have his recommendations for amendments to the ordinance that pertains to the Bellevue cave in area truck traffic uh, as soon as possible so that we could get to work on amending that as well. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening, Gregory Evans, Scranton resident, Scranton small business owner. I just want to follow up on the questions I had last week regarding Mr. Hughes, if I may. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Hughes, um, I don't know if you watched the last council meeting. I just wanted to follow up um, on item 6A, and I don't know if you heard what I said last time, but no one doubts that you're doing a great job for the city. And the couple questions I had asked, though, is because we know you're going above and beyond your, your typical duties, but whose job are you going above and beyond and performing for? Like, who would typically do this job that you're going above and beyond to do? <laughs> they weren't his words. I don't know if I understand the question. I, I don't I, think any of this was ever done by any solicitor, the, the things they've been doing. Okay, but is it a, is it a solicitor's job on, like within the administration end, or is it typically something in this role would be hired by outside, an outside entity? I don't know if on many of these issues the city ever, the city ever had any of these issues okay. before. Okay. Uh, the other question I had is, um, I'm not disputing whether or not you deserve further compensation, but is there a, a general estimate of what the city can expect to spend, um, whether it's hourly or monetarily, um, due, due to the additional costs? If the city does nothing, it would be zero. I have no idea, depending on what the work is involved. Okay. I have no idea what it, you know, what's going to be involved or what's going to happen with any type of financing that's okay. involved in prospectuses, reading prospectuses, revising prospectuses, giving legal opinions. I have no idea what, what's going to be done. Nothing might be done. Okay. And for the benefit of the city, I hope nothing, there is no more financing, that everything is in place. I agree. And the last thing is, and I mentioned about, this is actually not from Mr. Hughes, but to the council. I mean, we, you know, we talked about last time about um, assets, you know, the last thing you want to sell is an asset. Um, and if you're able to um, vote on the sale, you know, a council, whether it's an executive decision or a legislative decision, but with it, and to give the, 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 uh, the citizens the opportunity to, you know, have a caucus or a hearing of some sort. Um, is there like a, a master list available of the, the assets of the authorities in the cities that you'll be working with that you could share with us? Uh, I would think that the assets of the city could be contained in the audit. Okay. So if you were to take a look at the audit, you know, I think you'll find much of that information. But I can tell you if and when the decision uh, is made by the mayor regarding the sale of an asset. It's my belief that the legislation would have to come before city council. And city council would make sure that the people of the city are given multiple opportunities to weigh in. Okay, that's good to hear. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Hughes, too. Thank you.
Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, President of Scranton. Uh, okay, uh, last week I didn't realize what was at stake there, and, and I have to say that I'm against overtaxing land, raw land. I have a lot that I bought years back adjacent to my house. It's being taken care of now. It was by the neighbors voluntarily, and sometimes the DPW would come in and uh, clear out brush and so forth. And since I purchased this lot, it's gone up about uh, 20 or 30 uh, percent. Every seven years, I actually pay for the lot once again over, thanks to all these tax increases. And I have to state that I feel that like council did things right last week. It, it's one thing to jack my taxes up 22%. It's another thing to keep everybody that I talk to says, Dave, why don't you just pack it in on the lot and let it go back to the city and it can go for another 40 years without a dime of taxes coming in. So if that's what uh, the mayor and whoever else Mr. McGough wants, I see he scurried out of here, uh, then so be it, I guess, someday. And uh, on the commuter tax, which was uh, ban or turned down by the courts, uh, the uh, difference, I, I don't think I've seen it mentioned anywhere in the paper, and this was the state's doing, that it would be five months before you had a right to demand 10 cents of the commuter tax had it been collected. So uh, by law, the uh, uh, tax runs, uh, they have three months to collect it, and then they have another month to turn it over, and then the uh, 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 Berkheimer has another month to turn it over. So even if we had a commuter tax enacted, it would be five months before you saw a blessed dime of that commuter tax. And had somebody been uh, sticking it in their pocket instead or, or absconded with the money, then the taxpayer's on the hook for even more, which is really a shame. We, that's one type of tax reform we really need. And uh, I'm a little concerned. Uh, I do some walking through Southside, and uh, I see a lot of condemnations that were formerly rental units, and I hope it's not due to this rental registration. And if it is, I would hope that the city would lighten up a little bit and uh, realize that if somebody winds up sleeping under the Mulberry Street Bridge, it's a lot more dangerous of a situation than, uh, than uh, uh, living in a house with a, a faulty receptacle that could be disconnected or something and uh, call, somebody called back in an hour or two and uh, uh, see that it was fixed or, or whatever. And on the audit, uh, also that relates to our commuter tax problems. Uh, it's just shameful how long it's taken for this audit to come in. And that's the only thing that somebody had to say was that it was a month earlier than last year's. I, <laughs> come on. <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> That's bad. It's it's like it's it's eight months late. I mean, the dog ate my homework last night, so I I, I apologize if I'm a little disheveled tonight. Uh, and uh, last week I realized somebody behind me uh, didn't appreciate the golden parrot, and uh, well, he stayed home. He, he's not well. He stayed back at the hotel, and. Uh, I don't know if people realize this, but when I mention these things. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we lost $25 million out of the police and firemen's pension. And a lot of the taxes that we're paying is because some clown on Wall Street lost that money, misinvested it, and we're on the hook for it. So out there in TV land, if, if you want to thank anybody, thank Wall Street for a good portion of any tax increase that you have to pay. 
and uh, it's, it's really a shame. Uh, the uh, one of the uh, Greenberg, I think, or Greenstein or something, was uh, from AIG was trying to uh, sue the government for 25 billion dollars, and he was deposed from AIG uh, over uh, uh, booking errors and what have you in propriety. So that's where our fireman's pension is sitting, and uh, ho thankfully AIG. Uh, in their in their best effort didn't uh, join the lawsuit so you have to give them a little pat on the back for that even though they did get an 182 billion dollar bailout so uh thank you and have a good night thank and you don't forget to bok 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 is there anyone else Good evening, Council. Good evening. Um, it was good to see the audit report finally come out. I do hope the 2012 audit will be on time. Uh, I have a series of budget questions that I'm going to hold until next week because um, there are other things. Uh, I'm going to be watching very carefully the outcome of Mr. Burke's property uh, appeal because my property suffers a, a similar fate. If the trucks aren't going up East Mountain Road, they're coming across Seymour Avenue. Last week it was dump trucks at the rate of five to six an hour every day of the week. And uh, it's certainly not, not pleasant. And, um, and I don't know, does, are, is the restrictions by weight or by destination? Are there separate restrictions? I don't know. We'd have to ask uh, the police department. Okay. Um, now to, to 6A. I, first of all, I feel that if these two gentlemen deserve more money because their duties have been expanded, they should get a salary increase and not do it this way. Um, I think it's, first of all, I think it's poor contracting because the way it reads in here, Paul Kelly and Boyd Hughes could walk away from their job 24 hours after this is this ordinance is passed, and if there was borrowing, they would still be entitled to be paid. So I don't think it should be specific. I um, I think the language should, at a minimum, be changed to say the solicity, city solicitor and the uh, council solicitor. Uh, assuming that that's an expansion of the duties but um, and also I think it's a it, it could be construed as a disincentive because if you have two employees who are only making money if we're borrowing the incentive is to borrow and to not get things squared away and so I think that perception of that should be negated and for that reason it it does need change the language at a minimum and again, I would prefer a, a salary increase. Um, has the, uh, the vehicle storage begun at the police department yet? When is that scheduled to uh, begin? Do we know? Who no, knows? I don't. But I can. Who, who I knows? Don't. Uh, I think we would have to contact the police department. Okay. But as I was saying, uh, I do have some information for you um, regarding an update on 408, 408 Cedar. Cedar. I understand you, the council was provided. Uh, yes, an just today. Did you receive that? Uh, I don't know. I just saw that. I just got a note that it was it was sent to council and I didn't get any further than that because my little charge uh, is ill and I was babysitting at his house today instead of my house so I wasn't well, if you'd able like to, to see it. I would yes I would thank you mm -hmm. um, I'll grab it when I finish and then return it later thank you um, 
the management agreement with Central Parking, what is the term and what fee is to be paid under the current agreement? Uh, the agreement has not been finalized. And when it is, it will be brought before City Council. And then at that time, um, an explanation will be provided. Uh, thank you. Now, um, one for Mr. McGough. Uh, on the rental properties, again, how many have been registered? And when the properties are registered, do they check automatically to ensure that mercantile taxes and, uh, and the trash collection taxes are paid? Or fee is paid? I believe. Uh, as far as the number, I do not have that. Um, but in the ordinance, it does state that um, they will, that all taxes must be up to date and um, in so order somebody, to receive. Somebody is fixing, is, is checking that? I'm sorry? Somebody is checking that in the this person that's been hired for that rental registration? I did not ask. I, I was up. Uh, I, I will okay, uh, I'll, I'll, look I'll, into it. I think it would be helpful if at least once a month you gave a, a number of properties that have been registered. Uh, that would, I think, be helpful. Now, one of, the, one of the main problems with the prior revised recovery plan, the one of, what, 2002 or three, is that it wasn't adhered to. And uh, it looks as though we're heading down the same path because the, although the taxes were raised, the, the rec recovery plan stated that if the commuter tax was not received, uh, the approval was not received, then the city would either raise tax, uh, property taxes again or uh, cut expenses. But neither has occurred. So are we going to see a revised budget with, uh, with reductions to cover that? 2.5 million uh, City Council has no authority to open the budget that would have to come from the mayor and the business administrator but you could you cannot make cuts to adhere to the uh, rental reg uh, excuse me yeah uh, you make cuts to the adhere to the recovery plan no we cannot that was a decision that was uh, rendered by the court in 2010 <coughs> Okay. Uh, do we still have any past due bills awaiting payment? I think uh, perhaps if you wait until Mr. Joyce returns, uh, he can respond to those questions okay, and for is you. He, he's expected back next week? I believe so, yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi, Chrissy. Hey, Chris. Yeah, we're talking hobby for member. Hobby for member. Yep, up the by the project, bank, right? It's a mess down there. It really is. I know, Chris. We're gonna fight through it, but it's gonna happen. It's gonna be a big bottles down there. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Craig. Five A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, on the, on the Lake Scranton Road um, issue, uh, just a couple of clarifications, I guess. Um, in, in the past, I know that patching on Lake Scranton Road was done by DPW. Um, the, the problem is that it, it right now it's it's more patched than it is road um that it's been constantly being you know patched and uh it, it, it's really not adequate to take care of the um the road itself and, and i know at one time um in speaking with i think it was mr brazil and mr dewar we uh the, the talk was the that they were looking to actually repave that I guess about four tenths of a mile um, of Lake Scranton Road. That 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 that's what really needs to be done. Uh, I no, in order I, to I agree with you, but I think um, the deterioration is largely caused by the truck traffic. Oh, it, no and, doubt. I, and, I'm just saying that, and, and right. I know that so they've been. I'm thinking that this would seem to be, even though. You know, I think as a uh, safety net or a fallback 
it can be the city DPW. I think um, Mr. DeNaples should be uh, paying for the paving of the road that, you know, his, his steady truck traffic has caused to erode. Um, the, other, the other thing that, and I know it's been mentioned, and it was mentioned tonight that, uh, that we spoke about exemptions for um, Mr. DeNaples and uh, personally I'm saying, I know that I never asked or questioned uh, or asked questions about any exemptions for any one particular person. And I think Mr. Rogan also had some, some questions, but I don't think that they pertain to, you know, Mr. DeNaples in particular. I, I think our concerns were, or at least my concern, I, I'm not going to speak for you, I'm sorry. Um, my concern was that legitimate construction vehicles that were um, into Mount Margaret or something, what, was there a possibility for an exemption? And that's what I spoke about. Uh, uh, but I would like to make it clear that these, while I spoke about them here, they were never presented to the solicitor um, to, to have him question the ordinance. Um, they were just things that we talked about here, and I, f I felt that if, if the, there was a need to amend later on, that we would do that. Um, I fully support, I voted for and I still support uh, the ordinance to limit truck traffic on Lake Scranton Road. And I, I, I'm, I guess I'm upset with the hesitancy that has been shown by the administration. I, I think that we should move forward with this. Um, it, it is something that's needed and as I've stated before, I, I am on Lake Scranton Road you know, a couple of days a week, and uh, it, it is a, a situation that needs to be, um, there needs to be some resolution to the, the situation that takes place there. Uh, and, and the last thing I speak about this, this evening, um, traffic signals. Uh, the traffic signal at River Street and Meadow Avenue is at long last working. Uh, it, for a week it was on a blinker, um, this past Monday, it finally went to a, you know, full signal. Uh, uh, the only problem is, and, I, and I'm stating this, my own problem, I drive up River Street and get on 81 practically every day going to basketball practice. Um, and now I find myself getting to the top of the hill and where the stop sign used to be, I stop. Um, whether it's a green light, red light, uh, and the other night my, my wife yelled at me, saying, you know, it's a green light, why are you stopping? Um, force of, you know, years of habit. Um, my big fear is that people coming the other direction, coming up Meadow Avenue, will, you know, forget that there's now a light and will just assume that they have right of way like they had in the past. Uh, so I, I please, uh, you know, people that use that intersection, um, please be aware that it is now a working um, traffic signal and um, please be careful. Uh, the, other, the other thing, I talked to Mr. Welby earlier before the meeting um, and in his capacity through uh, Representative Flynn's office, um, he, he updated me on the um, the possibility of a temporary traffic signal at Cedar Avenue, Orchard Street, and the um, I-81 entrance exit, uh, which is now being used because of the, used more because of the um, closing of the, the bridge. And uh, Mr. Mr. Welby said that the there has been approval for a temporary signal. It is now in a bidding process and that PennDOT has fast-tracked the process and that hopefully within the near future there will be a temporary signal um, at that intersection, uh, which is really desperately needed because of the increased volume of traffic. And that is all. Thank you.
Thank you. And Councilman Rogan, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Yes, just a few brief items. I'm just following up on a couple issues from last week. We received another letter from Deputy Chief Al Lucas regarding um, the engine that was loaned out to Troop. Um, I had questioned initially about the engine being loaned out. They quickly replied, and then we had some follow-ups, and then again, another prompt reply. Um, it states that the uh, city has not performed, has not paid for any of the maintenance on the vehicle the time it's been loaned out, which was one of the big concerns. And um, in addition, there is also a certificate of liability insurance attached to this letter uh, made, out to, um, made out to Hose, Troop Hose Company number two. So they are paying for the insurance as well. So that being said, uh, a lot of the concerns that I had are certainly put to rest and we certainly appreciate um, the quick response. They also note that we have five reserve engines and this is one of the five. So there is no um, lack of coverage to the city because of this, according to the letter. And uh, we thank them for the prompt reply. Um, next, I had a couple residents contact me following the article in the paper um, regarding the tree planting. And uh, Mr. Santoli was very, very prompt getting back to us. I think I emailed this to Nancy maybe yesterday <laughs> and we already got a reply. Um, some of the, the, these are the planting location addresses. Um, I'm not going to read the individual addresses, but just the blocks. Um, West Granton and Trips Park, Far Street, um, the 1300 block, 1400 block, 1500 block, and 1600 block. The Clover Field area, um, areas between the field and the road, designated by the Forester. Um, the South Scranton area, South Irving Avenue, the one in 200 and 600 blocks. Prospect Avenue on the 300 block. Orchard Street on the 500 block. Cedar Avenue on the 500 block, the 700 block of South Webster, the 300 block of Pittston, the 600 block of Birch, in Connor Park in designated areas by the Forester, Connell Little League off Gibbon Street in designated areas by the Forester, the Connell Dog Park off Gibbon Street in designated areas by the Forester. So if anyone has any questions about that, uh, feel free to contact one of us or, or the Forester. And as I stated earlier, the, um, if a, a resident doesn't wish to have a tree placed on their property, it's certainly something they can opt out of. It's, it's not a forced, um, like an eminent domain type project. There's nothing forced about it. Um, and next, I just want to make a few comments. Um, these aren't, this item isn't on the agenda, but it's just something that's been in the local news recently. Um, we see again today that our neighbors to the south in Wilkes-Barre had yet again more shootings, more stabbings, more killings. And it's terrible to see what's going on in the surrounding communities. But as Scrantonians, it really makes us feel lucky to have the great police department we do, we do have that is doing a great job keeping Scranton so much safer compared to Wilkes-Barre, compared to Hazleton, Allentown, Philadelphia. And we really are lucky to have a much safer community than these do to the south. And I drive through the Wilkes-Barre area every day on my way to work, and I work even further south than that. And every day when I get home, I'm always happy that I live in Scranton and not one of these other communities. Um, so definitely would like to commend the great work that our police department has been doing. Um, also the great work of Acting Chief Graziano. And uh, we hope, to, hope that they will continue that work. I'm sure that they will. And as a long-term strategy, you know, I always talk about keeping taxes low and increasing the tax base. One of the biggest incentives for people to move into an area is the safety of the neighborhoods. Now the mayor, although I don't give him the credit for this, I, I would give the police department the credit. We haven't had a murder last year. And for a city this size, that's, that's a pretty good accomplishment, especially when you compare us to the other cities in the Northeast Pennsylvania region. So those, and I know these council meetings are broadcast in the Wilkes-Barre area. So I would like to invite our friends in the Wilkes-Barre area to come up to Scranton and check out our neighborhoods. They are much safer. And uh, we would like you to come up here and ex uh, live the Scranton experience and become part of our neighborhoods. But the main point is just the police department is, is doing a great job. I hope that they keep it up. And uh, we, need to, we need to stay safe in Scranton. So that is all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. Mr. Welby uh, just gave me a note. I, I, I misspoke. I'm sorry. I, I misspoke as far as the uh, 
traffic signal at Cedar Avenue. And it, it is now in the design stage, and the bidding stage will come next. Oh, okay. Okay, so that was all, just to clarify. Thank you. Um, I, I, before I begin, just want to piggyback briefly on um, what my colleague stated regarding our fine police department. I think it's also important to remember that we've been able to keep a good staffing level of police officers in this city. And so, uh, though they all do an outstanding job, had we seen those numbers diminished by, um, by a bankruptcy or failure to produce uh, a recovery plan or a failure to increase taxes to pay off the debt incurred in 2012 that was needed to keep this city operational, we would be in the same position, in fact, very likely worse than the city of Wilkes-Barre at this time. So I think it's, it's uh, important that we all continue to work together to keep the city operating and to return it to financial stability. Mrs. Evans, I, I apologize. I forgot to mention one thing, and I have to apologize to, um, I left out the neighborhood leaders as well. Um, Mary Chalipko in Pinebrook, she actually contacted me today and wrote a letter that she wanted me to read at the meeting thanking our police and for the great job they do. And I apologize to her. I had it printed out and ready to go. And, uh, and, and I left it on my desk. But I promised to her that I will read that next week. And um, just want to get that out there that uh, I apologize not being able to read the letter. But she just wanted to express her thanks as well to the police department. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. During the council meeting of January 3rd, 2013, I asked that the auditors, city business administrator, council finance chair, city clerk, all employees of the Department of Business Administration and representatives of municipal authorities would meet in February to map out a more efficient and effective procedure to complete the 12, 2012 audit in a more timely manner. To date, our office has received only two responses, one of which is from Mr. Eugene Barrett, Executive Director of the Scranton Sewer Authority. He states that Sewer Authority representatives are available to meet any day during the first week of February. However, he also says, quote, as a reminder, the Scranton Sewer Authority's fiscal year begins on April 1st and ends on March 31st. Approximately 90 days after the end of our fiscal year, work begins on the prior year's audit. This effort, undertaken by an outside independent certified professional accounting firm, takes another 90 days and the audit is published and distributed in September to all necessary parties, including city council, end quote. We also received a confirmation of attendance from Robert Rossi and company. But Mrs. Crake, if you could please contact all other parties to request a response in order to schedule this meeting. And also, please send follow-up reminders to those you're unable to reach by phone. Uh, as I previously stated on January 3rd, if the deadline set by the Home Rule Charter may have become unfeasible due to the downsizing of the Department of Business Administration and the completion and distribution dates of audits of municipal authorities, then Council should expect a completed 2012 independent audit of the City of Scranton on or before September 30th, 2013, in order to assist with the annual budgetary process. Now, this does not mean that Council disregards the deadline of the Charter, but I think it, it bears uh, investigation at this point. If the deadline established in the 1970s is 
still workable uh, in this decade. Further, positions in the Business Administration Department have yet to be filled, although administrators have been aware of these openings for at least two months. Mrs. Craik, please send a letter to Mr. McGowan on behalf of City Council requesting that he contact CareerLink as soon as possible if qualified candidates do not respond to the advertisements. It is essential to a timely 2012 audit that these positions are filled in January. It is also imperative to train new and current employees in their daily duties related to the annual audit and to assign individual responsibilities for all information requested and required of the BA's office by the auditors. If Scranton is to rebuild its credit worthiness and financial stability, it must be able to produce completed audits in a timely fashion which demands a fully functioning Department of Business Administration and the cooperation of municipal authorities. On January 14, 2013, a 2012 audit timetable was submitted by Sean Grassi, CPA, to Ryan McGowan that enables the auditor to issue 2012 audited financial statements by May 31, 2013. The auditor clearly is performing his job, and it is now up to the administration to do so as well in cooperation with municipal authorities. Although I had discussed in late 2012 this next matter with the mayor, I respectfully wish to provide him with a reminder, Mrs. Craig. Please send him a letter requesting a monthly meeting among the business administrator, the council finance chair, the city clerk, and department heads and or direct supervisors who are responsible for revenue items in the 2013 budget in order to review monthly revenues and expenditures and to address revenue problems that may arise immediately. The city cannot cover revenue shortfalls caused by department heads or other city employees. Uh, and uh, next, in regard to the tree planting that will occur throughout our, our city or select areas, therein um, I had requested as I did several years ago that uh, homeowners who were not interested in receiving a tree would not be forced to do so and uh, as Mr. Rogan stated earlier uh, I sent a letter to Mr. Santoli regarding that situation and I really have to thank him for responding to my request and Mr. Rogan's request for the uh, placement of the trees, the geographical the placement yeah. of the trees, so quickly in, in one day. Um, finally, I have a few citizens' requests. I'm pleased to report that the abandoned gray Volkswagen vehicle a par parked across from 312 16th Avenue was moved from that location, according to Acting Police Chief Graziano. I thank him for his timely action and response. An elderly Hill Section resident reports that recyclables are not being collected as scheduled, which causes her a financial hardship since she pays to take out and return the recycling can to her property. Please address this hill section problem. A homeowner reports that tree limbs next to her home at 1372 Penn Avenue need to be cut down. She's called the DPW and been told that her request would be placed on a list for tree trimming. When the limbs were not cut, she contacted the DPW again and was told there were no funds to remove the tree limbs. Um, I, I don't believe this to be the case, so uh, please, we ask the DPW to address this problem as soon as possible and notify the Office of City Council when the work is completed. And finally, a letter to Mark Seitzinger, 
On behalf of the Pine Brook Neighborhood Association, Scranton City Council requests the date of the annual rooming house inspection for two properties which I will not publicly name. In addition, we request current rental registration records and the landlord representative or agent's name and phone number be provided to the Pine Brook Neighborhood Association or to the office of Scranton City Council on or before January 23rd, 2013. I know uh, Mr. Seitzinger has had that request made of him directly from officers of the Pine Brook Neighborhood Association previously. And so uh, a, you know, a date of January 23rd is certainly not overly ambitious. And that's it. 5B, amending file of council number 56, 2011, an ordinance entitled General Operating Budget 2012 by transferring $692.22 from account number 01051-00051-4201, licensing permits and inspections, professional services, to account number 01051-00051-4101, licensing permits and inspections, mileage slash uniform allowance, to provide funding for mileage reimbursement to inspectors. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 6A, reading by title, file of council number 2, 2013, an ordinance. Ordinance of the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, appointing W. Boyd Hughes, Esquire, and Paul A. Kelly, Jr., Esquire, as special counsel to the City of Scranton and CaseCon Capital Incorporated as financial advisor to the City of Scranton on the issuance, sale, and placement of any bonds and or notes for the financing of the City of Scranton's unfunded debt, any transaction involving Scranton's unfunded debt, any transaction involving the sale lease back of city assets, any transactions involving the sale or lease of any authority assets which reduces the City of Scranton's bond indebtedness under the Unit Debt Act or results in the payment or loan of money by any authority to the City of Scranton, the refinancing or refunding of any of the City's outstanding bond issues and any 2013 tax anticipating notes other than the 2013 TAN Note A and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute a contract with CaseCon Capital Incorporated. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? Yes, I, I'd just like to <coughs> make one quick comment. Um, it was it was stated before that uh, perhaps it should be changed to state position rather than individual. Um, I, I, I think that by naming the individuals it is a more reasonable thing to do. Um, I would rather have people that are familiar with the past process and the, the current process and perhaps the future process of dealing with this um, rather than if in fact it were to, there were to be a change in solicitors um, rather than someone who is not familiar with it. So I think that this is a reasonable thing to do to appoint someone who is, um, again, f familiar with the process. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, no business at this time. Uh, before I call for adjournment, uh, I just have two uh, very quick items. I neglected to announce under my motions that uh, Councilman Joyce had called in that he was not feeling well and was unable to attend tonight's meeting. Um, in addition, I know at last week's council meeting, we had a number of resolutions appointing or reappointing 
individuals to various um, boards or authorities. And at, uh, I think, Mr. Rogan's request, we tabled it last week, letters requesting resumes were sent out on Friday, January 11th, the day following our council meeting. Uh, I assumed that perhaps the individuals concerned would not have received uh, those letters <coughs> until Monday. And so rather than placing those items back on tonight's agenda, I thought we could wait until next week mm -hmm. in that we provided a ample time in which for each of them to respond. Could I, uh, and I should have mentioned this before myself, um, one of the gentlemen who was up for reappointment um, talked to me and said that uh, he has a resume on file from a previous appointment. And uh, I talked to Mrs. Craig before, and um, what I would like is it, if there are any of those people that are being reappointed that do have resumes or sh have resumes on file um, with council office, if they would please contact Mrs. Craig or the, you know, the, the clerk's office um, so and let her know when those resumes were sent so that you know we can just take them out and use them absolutely and and that's all thanks thank you and finally uh, on behalf of council and mrs. Craig and Ms. Carrera we hope that um, our other staff member Mrs. Marciano is feeling better. She has been suffering badly with the effects of the flu. And uh, we want her to know that we are keeping her in our thoughts and prayers. And if there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.